Well, thank you very much. I'm uh, really, truly humbled to be among the honorees at this JTS commencement, and I want to thank you very, very, very much. I'm really deeply honored. I want to thank Arnie especially because Arnie came to the grand opening on October 28th this uh, last year, 2014, to Pauline Museum in Warsaw, and he had the most profound, the most profound, most profound response. And um, I just wrote an essay for for a volume, and I begin it as I do often with his comments that he made right after the event, which was a bid for hope. And as um, our development director said, Barbara, but you always start with that quote. And I said, yes, because it's the most meaningful quote. It's a bid for hope. And that's what I believe this Pauline Museum does. And uh, 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 David Ruskies was there as well and has written beautifully about it. And there are others here that I would especially like to thank. I'd like to recognize Jeanette Neubauer Lehrman, who is one of our great supporters of the museum. And there are others, uh, you know, Yitz Greenberg has also been there, but I'm hoping we'll come back. And I've got to thank, above all, my husband, Max Gimblet, who has let me live full time for eight years in Poland. And that is really, um, he, he's the one who gets the medal. <laughs> so let me start by saying that I am the child of Polish Jews, that I was born during the war in Toronto. And two weeks after I was born, all the Jews in my father's town were deported to Treblinka. And of course, that's not something I realized as I was growing up. It's only something that I came to realize through a long process, but basically in the last 10 years since I've been in Poland. And I really, I grew up in an immigrant neighborhood, but actually immigrant isn't the right word for it. Because in fact, it was, if you will, a post-Holocaust neighborhood. It was a neighborhood in downtown Toronto in the 1940s and the 1950s, when those who had survived the war actually arrived, and they were not called survivors, they were called DPs, displaced persons, and I remember it very, very vividly. So I grew up in an intensely Jewish, intensely Yiddish, intensely post-war, post-Holocaust neighborhood, and I don't think I knew fully what that meant until I really began professionally to become involved in a series of three projects that I think could uh, really be uh, a way of saying that what I had was not a career, but a calling. And after the, I would say the second and the third of the three, I had the feeling that I'd been put on earth for a purpose. And that if, God forbid, I were to die after that moment, I, I would have felt that my life was worthwhile. And what were the three moments? The first was the 1970s when I had the great blessing, the great good fortune, to uh, first of all have discovered and been embraced by the YIVO Institute for Jewish Research, which had moved from Vilna, moved its headquarters from Vilna to New York in 1939 when the war broke out. And it was there in the late 1960s and the early 1970s that I met Lucien Dobroszczycki. Lucien Dobroszczycki was from a generation that was really forced to leave Poland after 1968 in an anti-Semitic, essentially anti-Zionist, anti-Semitic campaign. And he arrived in New York without a word of English and Yivo hired him to catalog 15,000 photographs in their collection of photographs dealing with Jewish life in Poland between 1864, their earliest photograph, and 1939. And I was invited to work with him and to co-curate with him an exhibition, which we opened at the Jewish Museum, and also a book and then a film. And I felt like I, I sat, he had been, he, he, got a, he was a survivor of the ghetto of Lodz, and he received a PhD in history from Warsaw University, and I felt like I got another PhD sitting at the feet of someone who had been trained in Poland in the post-war period. And that exhibition was quite transformative because what it did was to really shift the image of the history of Polish Jews. In this case, a relatively short period between the basically the second half of the 19th century until the Holocaust. But it was a real shift, a shift from the way of thinking about Poland as home of the shtetl, fiddler on the roof, the kind of lacrimose history that Salo Baron has talked about of poverty, piety, and persecution. So that was the first moment, and that was in the 70s when I was quite early in my career. But the second moment arose after more than 40 years of my interviewing my own father. I began interviewing him in 1967, and I interviewed him till the day that he died at the age of 93, which was about four years ago. And that was an extraordinary experience because 
in the beginning, I interviewed him as part of my research, but then in the years that followed, because it was the single most interesting conversation. I don't come from a family of rabbis. I don't come from a family of Warsaw intelligentsia. I don't come, I don't come, I come from a family of shoemakers, uh, somebody apprenticed to an electrician, a house painter, but what I think of as an extraordinary, ordinary person, a person with the most exceptional memory and with a curiosity, an insatiable curiosity about the world, which I really feel that I've inherited. So I often think that I got the right father and he got the right daughter. And between the two of us, particularly given my training in anthropology, that somehow or other we managed in those more than 40 years of tape recorded interviews to somehow plumb the, I would say, inexhaustible depths of his memory. He was born in 1916 in a patuf in central Poland, and he left Poland in 1934 at the age of 17, but his curiosity about the world and his ability to remember were extraordinary. And finally, at the age of 73 in 1990, he began to paint what he could remember. And this resulted in a book, in an exhibition at the Jewish Museum in New York and elsewhere, and, and also a set of films and also a return to his hometown, who embraced him as the memory of his town, and also, it turns out, from their point of view, the most famous person from their town, which is, was a highly unlikely development. And I, th I, 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 I really believed at that moment, I thought to myself, you know, okay, you know, that's, you know, Dayenu. If I've, if I've only done that, then I was put on this earth to do something valuable, Maybe it's not earth shattering, but it's valuable, and I, I, I can die a happy death. And then, and then, I was given the opportunity to lead the development of the core exhibition for Pauline Museum of the History of Polish Jews. Now, I had first heard about it in the year 2000, and I only heard one sentence. They're building a museum of the history of Polish Jews in Warsaw. End of sentence. I never heard another word, and I thought, oh, that's impossible. What could it be? It, it, it doesn't, s I can never find anything out about it. But two years later, I got a call from the director, Jeze Halberstadt, inviting me, first of all, to see the project. He was here in New York. And also, a few months later, to go to Warsaw for a week to evaluate the work they had done on it that far. And I thought to myself, do you know, if, they if it is really possible to create such a museum in Warsaw, if it's really possible, then I want to give everything I've ever done in my entire life to this project because I can believe, and this is something that Chancellor Eisen really expressed in his initial response to his visit, and that is that this museum could be an agent of transformation that could move an entire society forward. And if that's the case, then this is where I want to put my energy. But I had a second reason, and that is I wanted to think new thoughts about museums. And I thought to myself, what better way to do it than to make one? And so those were my two reasons for, for, for doing this. And at first, I had no idea how long it would take. I had no idea that I would be living in Poland full time for almost eight years. And I had no idea that I would become a Polish citizen. Now, not by applying, <laughs> but because I always was. Because my parents were Polish citizens, both of them, my mother and my father. It was just a matter of validating their citizenship, and I automatically became a Polish citizen, which turned out to mean an enormous amount to the team that I was working with. I had no idea it would mean so much to them. And so the creating of this exhibition, the creating of this museum, which formally opened with its grand opening in October of 2014, it we have had since that moment, in the last six months, 300,000 visitors. Just this last Saturday, which was Night of the Museums, in the course between 6 p.m. and 1 a.m., we had 6,500 visitors. Of them, I would say maybe 60%, 70% are visitors from Poland. The rest are international. Easily half of them are actually Jewish visitors from Israel, from North America, from other places. And this truly, truly is, I, I really do believe that this is an agent of transformation, not only, not only for Poland, but I believe for Jews. And from, uh, I would say that my entire life has been dedicated to the idea 
that the history of Polish Jews is an extraordinary, extraordinary history, and that it has been lost together with six million European Jews and three million Polish Jews, it has been lost to the Holocaust, and that we have a moral obligation to honor those who died by remembering how they lived and how they lived for a thousand years. This community was the largest Jewish community in the world. It's an extraordinary resource. It's an extraordinary legacy. And we owe it to them. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to future generations to transmit it. And that is the mission of this museum. And it is the mission of my entire career. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for this extraordinary, extraordinary honor. Thank you.